folks, uh, you know, uh, no one uh, did more. This is not just a campaign. This is more of a mission. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot lose this campaign for the good of the country. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's not about me. It goes well beyond me. It goes about the country. I'm feeling good about where we are. I really am. You know, uh, the folks uh, are starting to focus in. And the guy we're running against, uh, he is, uh, he's not for anything. He's against everything. Yeah. No, I mean, it. it's, a, it's the weirdest campaign I've ever been engaged in. It's even worse than in terms of his behavior than the last time in 2020. South Carolina has once again given Joe Biden <laughs> its support in this primary election. This is all about. Uh, wait, 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 up? Uh, here, Mr. President, I've got you on this uh, speaker here. You got the whole gang there, huh? Oh, yeah. Did you hear me? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think they can hear you. Just You can thank them. I, I, I think, I hope you he can hear me. So, so what happened? <laughs> it doesn't mean that we will always agree. This is a great country. In no need of being made great. It's great already. Kamala Harris started their march to the White House. Folks, I know we talk a lot about history. There is a lot of enthusiasm here on the ground. I think voters in South Carolina feel a connection with the president, and I think there's a sense of loyalty that runs deep in the South, and I think that loyalty will continue in the future. But I'm so glad that we have Biden, who's there for our rights to bring us back together. And then two Everybody ready? 
as of this morning, uh, when you take the early vote plus the almost 3,500 absentee ballots that have been returned to date or, or before the numbers were released this morning, um, 51,710 people have cast a ballot early. Uh, culminated yesterday with the largest number of 10,929 people voting uh, before early vote ended last night at 6 o'clock. 76.5 of everyone who cast an early vote are black. That's 13% higher than the same early vote numbers in 2020. And this was a full-on competitive Democratic presidential primary. 6,141 of these people had never voted in a Democratic presidential primary before. And here's, this is the story. In an uncompetitive primary, contested but uncompetitive, uh, we have seen very solid early vote. Very solid. These are the folks, as that saying goes up in Glamour, who brung me to the dance. Yeah. <laughs> folks, uh, you know, uh, no one... Uh, you, buddy. I should call you Senator. Right. <laughs> He's the only guy when I said, you got to be Senator, said, I don't want to be Senator. <laughs> ...world, which I do a lot with other heads of state because I've known them for so long. And Welcome all of you to our campaign open house. Here, here in the heart of Joe Biden's home state of Delaware. Give it up for Julie, who is an extraordinary. This election, yes, it is about each of us asking of ourselves what kind of country do we want to live in? That really is what is at stake knowing that we each have the power to answer that question. Yes, it is about our ticket, but it is about all of us. In terms of the support that you give, so tired. Joe Biden, first of all, is fearless. When you look at what he has pushed through in spite of the odds, that's the story of his life, but it is the story also of his presidency. Joe Biden doesn't hear no. Understanding that it is about all of us. It is a great blessing and privilege for me to work with him every day because he really, really cares. And, you know, there's a certain perversion that has been taking place, I think, in our country by some to suggest that the measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down. But the measure of our leader is based on who he lifts up. What kind of country do we want to live in? Oh. Gender Valley Hills, twins. They're getting big, right? They're doing an 